My old friend doesn't exist. By user Sunflower Monarch 21, posted to r slash glitch in the matrix. So I've been stewing on this for a couple of weeks now. Recently, I randomly thought of an old friend that I hadn't seen since graduation. We went to different high schools, but had a lot of mutual friends and spent a fair amount of time together. So I went to look him up and I couldn't find any trace of him on social media. Odd, but not alarming. I found his dad and sister, but neither of their profiles mentioned anything about him, even on posts about or with other family members. I reached out to a mutual friend who went to his high school and asked if she had heard anything about him over the years. She had no clue who I was talking about. Even after I showed her a picture of the three of us at a concert, she said she didn't recognize him. They graduated in the same class, so I went and found their senior yearbook online to look him up. He's not in it, anywhere. He was a varsity athlete, had tons of friends. I have plenty of pictures of him. He was at my high school graduation as a spectator, and no one remembers him but me. It seems like he doesn't even exist to his own family. I don't get how a whole person just seems to have been wiped from existence, and it's really freaking me out. At this point, I have reached out to five friends who have zero idea who he is. How is this possible? By Rocker Chicks Rule, posted to r slash glitch in the matrix. In June of 2018, my daughter and I walked up the road a quarter of a mile away to the local waffle house for breakfast. Since we were walking, I only took a house key and my debit card and placed them in my jeans pocket. After breakfast, we walked up to the cashier with the ticket. I paid for the meal, then we left and proceeded to walk back home. When we were almost home, I reached in my pants pocket to grab my key to unlock the door and noticed that my debit card was not with the key. I panicked, so we turned around before unlocking the door and went back to the Waffle House to see if I had left the card with the cashier. We walked quickly back, also looking along the side of the road in case I dropped it. Once we got back to the Waffle House, the cashier said she gave my card back to me and nobody had turned in a card possibly found on the floor. I felt sick and all I could think of was hurrying back home and calling the credit card company to cancel my card. We proceeded back toward home again and finally made it there. I unlocked the door and walked past the kitchen and I noticed from the corner of my eye a piece of paper folded on the countertop. After opening the paper, I was shocked to discover that it was my receipt from the Waffle House wrapped around my debit card. The card and the receipt were back at home before I made it home. Just so you know, my daughter was walking behind me when I unlocked the door and entered the house, so she didn't have any time to place my card and receipt in the kitchen if she had had it. What the heck? I found my sister's missing necklace by user scary service 666 posted to r slash glitch in the matrix. My sister moved multiple states away three years ago. Her husband gives her very thoughtful jewelry pieces every Mother's Day. They're always extremely sentimental and bespoke to convey a specific sentiment or memory. Two years ago, he gave her a gold necklace with a heart carved inside with their family's initials and year of birth, 
with diamonds to the center where the heart meets a point because it's their daughter's birthstone. Since being given that gift, she has never left the state to visit home. She has also never been to my current house even before leaving. I also live pretty far from home and family hasn't made the visit, but I've lived here for seven years now and I haven't moved or spent long visits with my family, just daytime drop-ins. My sister's necklace went missing sometime in spring last year. She thought it might have broken and fallen off while out and about, and she was very distressed about it because it was an expensive gift and she felt horrible about it going missing. When we chatted about it, she actually told me that she wasn't going to tell her husband about it until she had searched everywhere possible. The entire house, the car, her workplace. She even called the stores that she shops at regularly, asking if it was found and turned in, but nothing. Just this week, I was pulling out old clothes and shoes to donate. My son went through a growth spurt and I got wider and I figured that it was time to clean house. I was pulling out all the shoes and purses at the bottom of my closet. And there, in the very back of my closet, I found my sister's necklace. There's absolutely no way that this could have ended up there. My sister has not come home to visit, and there's no way this would have ended up in our state, in my house, without her having mailed it personally. And she's never mailed me anything besides sending gifts directly from the seller that she never personally touched. And it's not as though it's just a similar looking piece or a mass produced item. This was specifically carved with their birth years and initials and their daughter's diamond birthstone. But it gets even stranger. I immediately FaceTime her when I find it. I was already trying to figure out how on earth it would have come to be in my closet. I haven't gone to her state yet. My son hasn't visited there. Our parents had, but they went before she got the gift. When she picked up and I showed her what I had found, I was honestly bracing myself because I was sure she was going to be just as confused and have a million questions I couldn't answer. But when I showed her what I found, she set the phone down to put herself in full view and pulled out her necklace from under her blouse. She had her necklace, not just that, but she had no recollection of losing it. No memory at all of talking to me about losing it, searching her house, calling shops. In fact, she was positive that she's always had it in her jewelry box and thought that I was being weird about finding the same one because it was likely a really common necklace. When I pointed out that it was not common and that it had their same initials and birth years, she just shrugged and said that it was a coincidence, but not all that strange. When I pressed it, she laughed and assumed I was pulling a prank of some kind, which would be extremely out of my character. I am not one to pull pranks. She asked if I had made it as some kind of joke. I am at a total loss here. I feel like reality is just all jumbled up and I'm the only one who notices that it's off. I was so confused. So I called our mom and I told her what happened. I told her the whole thing, asking if she recalled her losing the necklace. I was sure if she did, it would have come up in their calls as well. She didn't recall anything, but the way she acted in the call was even stranger. She just goes, well, these things happen. Don't let it drive you crazy. Our family is just sensitive to these things and then wouldn't elaborate on it, which is also very unlike her character. My three-year-old knew I was pregnant by user wrongdoer leading 8029 posted to r slash glitch in the matrix. A few years ago, when my daughter was three, I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. My husband and I were in no way trying for a baby whatsoever. I was on birth control and we were very careful. I walk into her preschool one day to find the director and her teachers telling me congratulations with big smiles on their faces. 
I used to work as a preschool teacher here, so a lot of these people were close friends of mine. I ask them what they're congratulating me for, and they tell me that my daughter announced to everyone that mommy has a little sister in her tummy. I laughed it off and told them all I was sorry to disappoint them, but that just wasn't true. My daughter and I went home and talked about it. I told her mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy, and she just kept pointing at my belly and saying, yes, you do, as if I were lying to her. A few days later, I woke up to someone touching my belly. My daughter has the bottom of my shirt pulled up with her hand resting on my belly while she rubs it gently and says, baby sister, what are you doing hiding in there? It was really sweet and I just assumed she really wanted a little sister. She had never expressed any interest in having a sibling prior to this and we never discussed it, but I figured that's what it had to be. We had the talk again and she got really upset with me. She told me she's seen her before and she's in there. She told me that her sister looks different than us and has blonde hair and blue eyes with little holes in her cheeks, AKA dimples. My daughter, husband, and I all have very dark hair, chocolate brown eyes, and no dimples. I talk to her about wanting a sibling and tell her that when I finish school, we will try to give her a little brother or sister. Again, she's frustrated and yelling, I already have a sister. I was expecting my period to start within the next week like clockwork. It did not. I took a pregnancy test and just stared at that faint positive result for what felt like forever. I was completely in shock. I was on birth control, so immediately I called my doctor and they saw me the next day. It was estimated that I was four weeks and six days pregnant. I gave birth to a blonde hair, blue eyed little girl with the sweetest dimples. This experience has always blown my mind. My boyfriend understood Japanese for a minute by user lopsided buffalo 538 posted to r slash glitch in the matrix. This is short, but it's really been weirding me out ever since it happened, and I thought maybe it belonged here. A couple of nights ago, my boyfriend and I were sitting in our living room watching One Piece. My boyfriend gets up to grab a snack from the kitchen while we let the episode keep playing. Our kitchen and living room are separated by a thin wall as the kitchen leads to the living room. So he could still hear the episode well in case any action picked up. Well, one character says something along the lines of, why do you care about this woman anyway? She's a criminal. Mind you, we were watching subbed, so this is all in Japanese. I'm reading the subtitles, but my boyfriend can't see them at the moment. But after the character asks that question, my boyfriend yells in from the kitchen, because she's my friend, dumbass. I pause the episode immediately and walk into the kitchen and to ask how my boyfriend knew what they were saying. He got this look of realization, followed by total confusion and then horror. His exact response was, I don't know. I just, I don't know. He's never spoken another language other than English, never taken any Japanese classes, never even downloaded Duolingo. We're both totally creeped out by it. Some suggested that he watched the episode without me, but he didn't. We don't care if each other is a couple of episodes ahead sometimes. So if he does watch ahead, he'll usually just tell me, but he says he did not watch ahead this time. He said he didn't even realize it was Japanese for a minute until I came in and brought it up. So weird. In 2004, I went to Ireland on the super cheap during this one magical week where there were insanely low fares. 
that's not the glitch, I'm just nostalgic for that time. While visiting family there, I picked up a Ross O'Carroll Kelly book, not realizing that it was a popular series, and read The Orange Mocha Frappuccino Years in about a day. The first-person narrator uses a Brett Easton Ellis-like voice, where everything is his impressions in real time. I found it hilarious. At one point, we were walking down Grafton Street in Dublin. We walked past a busker, and he was playing Don't Look Back in Anger, and he was right on the So Sally Can Wait etc. part as we walked by. Something about how he was singing his heart out, even though it's sort of a cheesy song, impressed me. And I turned to my partner and said, You know, I don't care what anyone else says, I love this song. And she said, Yeah, too bad the buskers have ruined it. And I was like, What? And she said, Yeah, I heard another one doing it earlier. I had been with her, but I hadn't noticed. Later, in a train station newsagents, we were selecting supper. It was either a triangle sandwich each or a candy bar each, and another book in the Ross O'Carroll Kelly series, The Teenage Dirtbag Years, to read on the next train. We chose candy and the book. She'd read two pages, then I'd read two, passing it back and forth, perfect for a late evening train where half the people were sleeping and the rest were quiet. She handed me the book with an odd expression at one point, and I looked down to read. It said, So I'm walking down Grafton Street with Sorsha, and we walk past this busker, and he's doing Don't Look Back in Anger, giving it all, so Sally can wait. And I turn to Sorsha, and I say, I don't care what anyone says, that's a great song. And she says, yeah, too bad the buskers have ruined it. My own skepticism says, okay, common street, common buskers, and if you google the title of the song and busker and Grafton, there's a YouTube video of a guy playing that song in 2014. So it is a cliché. And our conversation wasn't at all original, filled with phrases that are really just filler in a way. But it still felt really eerie. And honestly, it kind of still does. Over the years, several friends and I have experienced an odd phenomenon while traveling around the state. We live in Michigan, by the way. On multiple occasions, we have inexplicably lost hours, and we've never been able to determine why. Sometimes I was alone, and other times a friend was with me. One of the most vivid instances, from approximately seven years ago, still unnerves me. Back then, I was living in Flint, Michigan, with my parents, about a year before relocating to Grand Haven. My friend and I decided to go camping in the Beulah, Frankfurt area, a journey that typically took between three to three and a half hours. We were no strangers to this route. We had made this trip numerous times over the years, especially since my family owned a lake house on Platte Lake, and we spent every summer there during my childhood. Wanting to maximize our time, we left Flint at three in the morning, hoping to get in some early morning fly fishing upon our arrival. Roughly two thirds of the way, on M115, just north of Cadillac, a peculiar calm enveloped the surroundings. Now, M115 runs through a national forest, so tranquility is the norm, but this calm was different. It was almost eerie. The early morning sun began to cast its first light, slowly illuminating the surroundings. Before we knew it, we were nearing the US 31 intersection in Benzonia. A glance at the car's clock showed 12 p.m., a detail my friend also observed. Doubting the car's clock, I checked my cell phone, which confirmed the time. Even a bank sign we passed displayed the same. The reality was hard to grasp. We had anticipated our arrival around 6 to 6.30 a.m., but here we were, six hours behind schedule. Fatigue wasn't to blame. I had had ample sleep the previous day, 
and with over 120,000 miles driven annually, I was accustomed to long hauls. Plus, both of us were well acquainted with the route. Our gas tank was still nearly full, indicating we hadn't just been driving aimlessly. Checking our credit card statements later, we found no gas charges during the missing hours. The truck's mileage aligned for the expected distance of our trip. What's most baffling is how seamless the time loss felt. We had no memory of any extended stops or detours. Our journey, by all accounts, felt typical in duration, but the clocks told a different story. My grandparents have both passed quite a few years ago, but one of the stories that they told me has stuck with me all these years. Grandma and Grandpa were driving through Pennsylvania to an old family farm. The farm belonged to his uncle and cousins who lived there. Grandpa was a city kid and had visited the farm every summer for years as he was growing up. It had been about 25 years since he'd been, but he loved that farm and he wanted to introduce Grandma to his cousins and show her around the farm. As they drove closer to the farm, Grandpa began to tell Grandma about the little town that was on the road on the way to the farm. Soon, they reached the little town. Grandpa was amazed that it hadn't changed a bit. Toward the end of town, they saw that a hotel was on fire. The road was blocked by firemen using an old-fashioned fire wagon with a water tank pulled by horses. They thought it was strange, but they just chalked it up to being rural Pennsylvania. Eventually, the water wagon moved and they could drive by. They reached the farm and after greeting Grandpa's uncle and cousins, they shared the news about the fire at the hotel. Grandpa suggested they all go down to see if they could help. The relatives looked shaken. That's when one of the cousins explained that there was no town. Not anymore. About 20 years before, the hotel had burned down and the fire spread to most of the small town's main street. After their businesses were lost, people left the town. In fact, the uncle and cousins were the last people living in the area. Grandma and Grandpa couldn't believe it. They had just seen the town, the fire, even smelled the smoke. They and some cousins got in the car and drove back to town going back the way they'd just come, and the town was gone. Just some burnt out shells of a few buildings remained. When I was a teenager, I went to Pennsylvania to visit a friend and his family over the summer. I was about 15 years old at the time, and still to this day, I cannot forget the bizarre experience I had. It was a regular night and I was sleeping in my friend's room when I awoke having to pee. My friend had bunk beds and I was on the top bunk, so I had to hop down to make my way out of the bedroom and down the hall to the bathroom. I went into the hallway from my friend's room, and because it was very dark, I kept one hand on the hallway as I made my way to the guest room door, which is located on the same side of the hallway as my friend's room. I knew that if I followed the wall to the guest room door, I could go straight across the hallway to the bathroom door, which is exactly what I did. I get into the bathroom, I turn on the light, I go pee, and when I finish, I look at myself for a minute in the mirror before returning to bed. Everything is normal up until this point. This isn't the first time that I've gotten up in their house in the night to use the bathroom, and I have always followed this same routine of following the walls with my hand in the dark. As I leave the bathroom, I do exactly the same thing to get back to my friend's room. I go straight across the hall from the bathroom door to the guest room door and with one hand on the wall the whole time, 
I make my way back to my friend's room. This is where things get glitchy. I get to my friend's room and I enter it. But as I enter it, I'm not in my friend's room. I'm somehow in the office next to it. I realize immediately that this makes no sense because I had my hand on the wall the whole time as I had done countless times before. But here I am in the office. The office is not very big. It's a small square room with a closet next to the hallway door to my right as I enter it. Right away, I can see that there is light coming from inside the closet. So I turn and slide open the door. Inside the closet, there are four old TVs stacked one on top of the other. All of them are playing static. I am completely confused by this and I have no idea how I even got into the office to begin with, let alone why there are just four TVs in the closet playing static. I shake my head in confusion and decide to just go back to bed. I make my way out of the office, back into my friend's room, and although I'm still completely baffled by what just happened, I basically just go back to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I immediately thought about what had happened, and I went straight into the office and opened the closet. There's nothing in there except for one jacket hanging on a hanger, right above where the TVs had been. I don't recall telling my friend or his family about this experience, and everyone that I've told since always says, well, obviously it was just a dream, which my logic really wants to agree with, but I know that this was not a dream. I recall every single moment from jumping out of the top bunk, walking down to the bedroom door, trying not to make a noise, everything. I remember how black the hallway was, the feeling of the wall on my fingers, every single detail, and everything about it was exactly the way it is in real life, except for the glitch. This was back in 2006. A group of friends and I decided to spend the weekend in Germany to watch some of the World Cup games in the local town squares of Frankfurt. We flew in from the UK. Things go as expected, lots of beer and lots of fun. The evening is getting really late and we find ourselves struggling to find any more bars open at the time. We end up walking a bit and we find ourselves at the river. We decide to walk along it to see if we come across any place that's open. It's mostly just trees, grass, and small parks. It was clear that we weren't going to find anywhere here to get a drink. We rounded a corner, and all of a sudden there are these huge tents with music playing, a good amount of people, and beer being served. Great, we hit the jackpot. So we all find a table. It wasn't a waitress-style venue, more like a mini festival vibe. So I offer to go buy drinks at the bar and bring them back. The girl at the bar asks me what I'd like in German. She realizes that I am English from my terrible German and we start chatting in English. After a few exchanges, she says that she wants to introduce me to someone and to follow her behind the bar. So I follow her and we walk behind the bar and out behind the tent. It's quite a large open space, with no one else there except a group of guys in the back corner of this grassy area. She walks straight toward these guys and introduces me to them, with something along the lines of, Hey, this guy is English too. I think you'll get along. She then turns around and walks back to where we'd come from, leaving me with these guys. I say hello and we start small talking. I can't really remember what about where I'm from in England and why I'm in Germany, things like that. Turns out these guys are from the same town as where one of the friends that I'm with is from. I end up chatting with them for what seems like an hour or so to the point where I completely lost track of time. That's when my friend finds me. I see him walking across the grass from the tent. He says they're about ready to leave and to come on with them. 
I say sure, but just before we leave, let me introduce you to my new friends, as they're from your town. He says hello and asks where about in the town they live. It turns out they live on the same street as one of my friend's uncles. My friend asks perchance if he knows his uncle, and the guy says, yeah, actually, it's his dad. Now both of these guys realize that they're first cousins. My original friend's dad isn't in his life anymore, and he doesn't ever have any contact with that side of the family, but obviously knows who they are. So it kind of makes sense that these guys have never met each other before, but they know who each other are once they connected the dots. Anyway, they chit chat a bit, exchange numbers, and they still keep in touch to this day. As we're walking away from the group, my friend asks me why I decided to go up to these guys in particular and strike up a conversation. So I tell him about the girl behind the bar who wanted to introduce us. That's when he looks at me really weirdly and explains that he watched me go to the bar to get drinks. According to him, it looked like I was speaking to nobody. And then I just wandered through to the back area behind the bar. It was fully open so he could see through. And I walked directly over to this group of guys and then stood there talking for that hour. My friends ended up deciding to leave me to it and just got drinks themselves until they were ready to leave. To this day, my friends do not believe me that there was any girl or third party there. To them, I just walked up to a bar, spoke to no one, and then walked up to a random group of guys in a reasonably busy beer tent away from the main area. And then one of them ended up being my friend's first cousin. Since I was making a big deal about how there was definitely somebody that introduced us, otherwise why would I hone in on a bunch of strangers and start chatting, my friend ended up calling his cousin to ask him exactly what happened. Apparently, I did just walk up to them with no one else there and start chatting. They found it a bit weird, but they just went with it. Now, I don't know if it's a glitch or what, but it's really odd, especially because we're in a different country. If we were in the same town or even anywhere in the UK, it might not have been that weird and I could have explained it away, but we hadn't bumped into any other British people the entire weekend. Anyway, I've always dwelled on this and I just refuse to accept that there wasn't somebody who introduced us. I remember it vividly. And I know that being drunk doesn't help me and it makes me question my version of events too. But I remember this person. I mean, I've gone drinking a lot and I've never hallucinated before. So I honestly don't know how to explain it. I apologize if this doesn't make sense, but I am freaked out and I have no idea how to explain this. My coworker and I were driving back from dinner to the place we were staying at. We had driven this route a handful of times and were very familiar with the surrounding area. It was a seven minute drive from the restaurant to where we were staying. We left the restaurant and had a straight drive for about two miles no turns until we had to take a right turn into the parking area of the property that we were staying at. As we approached the hotel, the tall Courtyard by Marriott sign was visible, as was the building. We were a block away from the turn, and then we just suddenly weren't. We were all of a sudden driving on a highway, about to take the exit to the right. It was immediately apparent and I said to my coworker, wait, something's wrong here. And he replied, yeah, what the heck just happened? We were just about to turn into the parking area. I told him to pull over and I looked up on maps where we were. The map showed that we were 20 minutes away in the opposite direction that we'd come from. It was physically impossible. The time on the clock was still the same as it had been when we were next to the hotel. I don't understand, and neither does he, and he doesn't want to tell anybody because it sounds so crazy. 
but somehow we were teleported 20 minutes away. It was the single most disorienting feeling I have ever experienced. But now, ever since, I feel like everybody in my life has just changed. Everyone feels so distant. I can't shake the feeling that something is still very off. A few years ago, when my daughter was three, I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. My husband and I were in no way trying for a baby whatsoever. I was on birth control and we were very careful. I walk into her preschool one day to find the director and her teachers telling me congratulations with big smiles on their faces. I used to work as a preschool teacher there, so a lot of these people were close friends of mine. I ask them what they're congratulating me for, and they tell me that my daughter announced to everybody that mommy has a little sister in her tummy. I laughed it off and I told them all that I was sorry to disappoint them, but this just wasn't true. My daughter and I went home and talked about it. I told her mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy, and she just kept pointing at my belly and saying, yes, you do. She was very upset, as though I were lying to her. A few days later, I wake up to somebody touching my belly. My daughter has the bottom of my shirt pulled up with her head resting on my belly while she rubs it gently and says, baby sister, what are you doing hiding in there? It was really sweet and I just assumed that she really wanted a little sister. She had never expressed any interest in having a sibling prior to this and we had never discussed it, but that's just what I assumed. We had the talk again and she got really upset with me. She said, I've seen her before, she's in there. She told me that her sister looks different than us and has blonde hair and blue eyes with little holes in her cheeks, AKA dimples. My daughter, husband and I all have very dark hair, chocolate brown eyes and no dimples. I talk to her about wanting a sibling and tell her that when I finish school, we'll try to give her a little brother or sister. Again, she's yelling, I already have a sister. I was expecting to start my period within the next week like clockwork. I didn't. I took a pregnancy test and just stared at that faint positive result for what felt like forever. I was completely in shock. I was on birth control, so Immediately, I called my doctor and they saw me the next day. It was estimated that I was four weeks and six days pregnant. I gave birth to a blonde haired, blue eyed little girl with the sweetest dimples. This experience has always blown my mind. A former coworker is back from the dead. This is one of the biggest personal glitches I have ever had. I work in the admitting department of my local hospital. One of the things I do is keep track of obituaries. When someone's obituary appears in the newspaper, I check to see if they still owe the hospital money. If they do, I clip the obit, fill out a form, and then keep track of how their insurance pays and things like that. A few years ago, and I've worked there for over 20 years, one of my coworkers in the dietary department retired and passed away soon after. I know because I processed her obituary. This coworker's daughter was really good friends with my cousin, so the daughter was even over at my cousin's house the day after my coworker's funeral. They had a big wake for her mother and everything. Today, as I'm working ER registration, the daughter comes in and says that her mom is in the ER. I was brought up a little short. I thought, uh, what? I didn't say anything for a moment. So my office mate had to step in for me and look up this lady's mother. Sure as heck, it's the woman who died years ago. 
My office mate lets the daughter back into the ER to see her mom, and I am unable to find the obit form that I filled out. Edit number one. I heard back from my cousin, and he's as weirded out as I am. Coworker's daughter has no memory of the wake or anything, but she said she's been getting this stuff from the people around her for the past few days. People remember her mom dying, even funeral details and the like, but the coworker's daughter doesn't remember any of it. Plus, her mom is right there. Really freaky. Edit number two. Spoke with cousin instead of texting him. Coworker's daughter said that it was her dad that died and not her mom, but she also said that's not the way that any of the people who run into her remember it. They're asking where her dad is, how he is today. He's not answering his phone or texts. To her, the man had been dead for over 10 years. Edit number three. I've been asked if I had any close calls or moments where I could have slipped from one universe to another. And yes, there was one. It was a little over two years ago. I was getting my evening medications together, but I was tired and I screwed them up. I ended up taking an entire full bottle of glipizide, which is a medication that lowers your blood sugar. I accidentally took enough to kill a horse. I realized it right as I laid down for a nap due to extreme exhaustion, and I felt really, really weird going to sleep. Looking back on it, Maybe I fell asleep forever there and woke up here. Final edit. I've been getting a lot of angry replies about what happened with the glipizide. So this is the full story. I take a lot of medications for a lot of stuff. So I have a lot of empty pill bottles lying around. That day, I had an empty pill bottle with the label still on it. So I figured I would just grab all of my evening med doses out of my bedroom take them to the dining room, and just swallow them with dinner. I've done it loads of times before. Like I said, I was tired that night. So when I pulled out my bottle of glipizide, I got my dose, and then accidentally closed the bottle with my evening meds in it, put it back where the bottle of glipizide went, and then took the full bottle of glipizide with me to the dining room. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't look at the bottle when I took my meds that evening, I just threw the pills back and swallowed them with dinner. The pills were tiny, and all I noticed was that they didn't feel quite right in my mouth. I didn't think anything else about it though, because the idea of taking a whole bottle of pills seemed ludicrous to me. I mean, what kind of idiot would do something like that? Me, apparently. When I stumbled back to my bedroom, I checked the bottles, because something was very, very wrong. I discovered the rest of what should have been my evening meds in the bottle. I had mistakenly put the glipizide in its place, and that's when I saw that I had downed the full bottle. I wanted to grab my husband and holler and shout, but my body was made of lead. I could only crawl over to my bed and flop on it. And when I woke up, everything was fine. That's what I mean by going to sleep there and waking up here. I don't think that I woke up back in that place, that other dimension. I think I died there and I woke up in this one. I tell that story because that's why I think that perhaps, just maybe, that person did die in the other universe, but not in this one. In any case, it's freaked me out ever since. I know this story is going to sound weird and crazy, but hear me out. I'm not too familiar with this subreddit, but a friend of mine who's always talking about metaphysics, the twilight zone, simulation type stuff, loves this sub and keeps telling me to post my story. Anyway, here's my story. Two weeks ago, I was about to get ready for a party at six. Just before I started getting ready, one of my friends messaged me super excited because a guy she's had a crush on for the last four years finally asked her out and he was coming to the party with her. While I was texting her back, 
My younger brother walked into the room and asked if I could drive him to his friend's house, which I agreed to do. Then I went into the bathroom to have a shower and do my makeup. So I got in the shower, but when I went to wash my hair, I realized that my conditioner was finished. I was pretty ticked off because I had only bought it a couple of days beforehand, and it's an expensive brand. My younger sister always uses up my things, so I knew that she had used it all. She had also trashed the bathroom, leaving water everywhere and her dirty towel on the floor. I was pissed off and I was about to get out of the shower in order to tell her off and get some more conditioner. But as I went to get out, I realized at the last second that she'd kicked the grippy mat that we have at the bottom of our shower tub up. Our shower and tub is super slippery without the grip mat. So as I went to step out, before I could realize it, my foot slipped and I fell neck down onto the edge of my tub. Time seemed to slow down in my head, and I remember that my last thought was, wow, this is how I die? How stupid. But here's the thing, at the moment of impact, I woke up in a start, back in my bed. I know, it sounds stupid and cheesy like something from a dumb Netflix show, but there's literally no other way to describe what happened. I was lying in my bed right before I got up to shower the first time, but I don't remember falling asleep. And the thing is, I've been a lucid dreamer for the last five years or so. And if this was a dream, it was way more vivid than anything I have ever experienced. What really weirded me out though, was that the exact same friend who texted me the first time messaged me after I woke up to tell me that the guy she'd had a crush on had asked another girl out and that she was really bummed out about it and didn't want to come to the party. I was weirded out that there was some similarity between that and the dream, but I didn't think about it much at first. As I went to reply, my younger brother came in to ask if I would take him to his friend's house. All the blood drained from my face. He just stood in the doorway looking confused and asked me what was wrong. I rushed to the bathroom, feeling like I was losing my freaking mind, and I went to check the conditioner bottle. I know this sounds completely crazy, but the bottle was finished just like before, and the grip mat was kicked up. At that point, I went back to lie down in bed and I texted my friends to tell them that I would not be going to the party. I am pretty sure that I slipped in the shower, died, and then woke up in some alternate dimension. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I really don't know how else to explain this series of events. In any case, it's rattled me ever since. I still have no reasonable explanation for this. I remember my first day of my new school. This was only a couple of years ago. I remember exploring the school for the first time. I clearly remember walking up a large flight of stairs to a second floor. I remember there being two water fountains to the left and the stairs being next to the bathrooms. I never went there again since it was on the opposite end and it wasn't there the next year when I checked it out. My friend clearly remembers the exact same thing. They weren't fake memories because we both remember the exact same thing. However, nobody other than him and me and maybe a couple of other people remember it. We decided to check it out one day and look for any sign of a second floor in and around the bathrooms, but there was nothing. Where there were stairs, there was just a blank wall. We even asked around and a couple of very confused people told us that the school had never had a second floor. I am so confused. This was a few days ago. 
I was in a room at my school with a Day of the Dead celebration going on. I was taking videos and pictures for my project, which was to cover the holiday for my school, when I accidentally bumped into this shorter girl with black hair. She turns around and I just apologized for bumping into her. She said, oh, it's okay, and turned back around. I start walking toward the exit of the room and I see a buddy out in the hallway. I go to say hello and we start walking back to class. Halfway there, the same black haired girl reappears from around a corner ahead of us in the halls, which makes no sense. How did she reappear there? I remember just stopping mid conversation with my buddy because I was dumbfounded how this girl managed to just teleport across the entire school. This happened to me a few months ago. My two friends and I decided to take a trip to Los Angeles for fun. Keep in mind that we're from the East Coast and we don't know anybody in LA. On the last day of our vacation, we had to check out of the hotel by 11 a.m. The night before, we had gotten back to the hotel really late, so we ended up sleeping in. We knew that it would be difficult to get completely packed up and ready to leave by 11, so we decided to go to the front desk and request a late checkout of noon. We had done this at another hotel before with no issues, and this place wasn't really at capacity with guests, so we figured it was a reasonable request. I drew the short straw and was tasked with going down to the front desk. The elevator in this hotel was really old and quite small, and I found it to be very creepy. I also have mild claustrophobia. So I avoided the elevator and walked down the three flights of stairs instead. I asked the receptionist if we could have a late checkout and gave her the room number. She looked at me surprised and said, yes, we approved your late checkout already a few minutes ago. I was very confused and I asked her to elaborate. Apparently, a girl had come down a minute or two before me to ask for a late checkout for our room number and then had walked out of the building. At this point, I figured that maybe one of my friends had, for whatever reason, decided to take the elevator down and ask before I did. I grumbled a bit at this because I had just walked down those stairs for no reason at all, and it didn't make any sense why they would ask me to go and then beat me to it. But I got back to the room and to my surprise, both of my friends were there. One of them was taking a shower and the other one was packing. It didn't look like either of them had left the room. So I was kind of like, all right, which one of you is the prankster? They were pretty confused and asked me to explain. So I told them what the receptionist had said and they were shocked. Neither of them had left the room, and it seemed too big of a coincidence that somebody would have the same request as us at the same time and just make the mistake of giving our room number. I have no idea who that girl was that made the request. They started joking that maybe it was me from another dimension or something. But yeah, whatever it was, the whole thing was kind of eerie. In 2018, a group of friends from college and I decided to go and spend a month in Berlin over the summer. We spent our time between part-time jobs, partying and just simply enjoying the city and its cultural activities. Everyone in the group was cycling places, but not me. We had a bit of a bike situation with mine and so I decided to spend the rest of our time there on foot or using the metro. It wasn't that much of a bother until we decided to go and party near the river Spree. 
This place has bars and clubs, and it's overall a great place to party. But from what I recall, public transportation didn't go that far in the middle of the night. They had all cycled there, so I was the only one without a means to go back to our apartment. It was a 20 minute cycle from the bar, but it was at least a 35 minute walk. A friend of mine, I'll call her Ava, decided to walk back with me and just take her bike next to her so that she wouldn't leave me alone wandering around the city in the middle of the night. It was about 4 a.m. by the time we left. As we're walking down this rather big street and chatting, I remember smelling food and seeing this restaurant past the pedestrian crossing to which we were headed. I'm a foodie and I was rather hungry, so that was pretty appealing. A woman was sitting there having some kind of food. She had black hair. I could see her profile through the large windows, which took up almost the entire wall up to the ceiling. I specifically remember thinking, that's weird that they're still open at this time of night. I remember telling myself I had to tell Ava about it when the flow of conversation allowed it. As I was walking and starting to cross the road, the crossing in front of the restaurant, things got kind of blank. It's like I was on autopilot. I was hearing her voice, but it was kind of muffled. Once we were past this restaurant, Ava stopped, turned to me and said, wait, wasn't there a restaurant just there with a woman eating? I had completely forgotten to tell her. It's like my memory had been wiped and restored within seconds. And there it was, a hotel. The large windows were the same, and inside was the hotel's restaurant, with a layout and tables that looked nothing like what we saw, and nobody was sitting there eating. We were both very shocked, and saw that a male receptionist with short hair was in there. I knew we just had to ask him if somebody had just been eating there. It was just too weird. He was a little bit freaked out about us coming in like that, but he said he'd been alone in there for hours. After discussing with Ava, we found out that she also saw the woman eating, but she only saw her back. She was seated with her back to the window. While I could tell everything about this woman, because I saw her entire profile. After that, Ava never wanted to talk about it again. She got mad whenever I tried to bring it up. People seem to have changed around me after this event too. Even my mom started to not remember things that she should have remembered. And a lot of people just seemed different overall. I must also note that I was not drunk, not by a long shot. And staying up that late was really common for me at the time. So I didn't feel sleep deprived either. Also, Ava saw the same thing I did. Interestingly enough, the name of the hotel that was originally a restaurant when we saw it is the Grimm Hotel, in reference to the author of many fairy tale stories. All in all, a very weird experience. A friend and I booked a hotel room to ring in the new year. At the time of this event, I was completely sober. We were in the room and I called the front desk to ask about room service. They told me that there would be a rather loud party in the room below us this evening and offered to move us to another room. We accept this offer. They told us to get our keys ready so that we could swap them with the staff person who would deliver our new keys to our room in a few minutes. I start packing what little I had already unpacked and my friend hands me her key in the little paper holder. I pulled out my change purse and removed my key to put it in the holder with hers. This is when things got a little wonky. I can't exactly remember if I put the keys in my pocket of my sweatshirt or if I placed them down in front of the TV. But either way, when I came back from grabbing my travel bathroom bag in the bathroom, the keys were gone. 
I couldn't find them anywhere. The staff person arrived just a second after this. I go to answer the door to tell them that I seem to have misplaced our current keys and to please give me a minute. But I never do. I search through everything in the two relatively small, organized bags that I had. I searched all the pockets of my jacket, the floor, the bathroom underneath the pillows. They were nowhere. I never left the room. These keys just vanished. From the time that I left the main room to go grab my bag and the time I came back, just a few seconds, those keys were gone. To this day, I have no explanation of what happened to those keys. We never did find them. Over a decade ago, I was traveling on vacation and I had booked hotels through some page similar to Expedia, but smaller. Anyway, I got to one of the cities that I was visiting and I walked to where the hotel I booked was supposed to be. It was a construction site. I tried to call the emergency number for the webpage, but no one ever answered. I was really mad, but I figured I would just deal with my refund once I was back home and I looked for a new place to stay. I was in the city for an event, so I knew some other people who were also there. I asked them where they were staying and decided to just get a room there. It was like a Best Western or Holiday Inn, something along those lines. Anyway, I'm checking in and the receptionist tells me I already have a paid booking there in my name. I am 100% sure I did not mix up the addresses. Also, this hotel was a completely different brand or group. I suppose the website could have rebooked me, but they never informed me of it. And the address that they sent me to was nowhere close to the other hotel. There are hundreds of hotels in that city. The chance that I would randomly pick that one were pretty slim. I never did manage to speak to anybody from that webpage, but... It still freaks me out just a little bit. When I was in college, I was a banquet worker at a hotel. One night we were hosting a wedding and we ran out of trash bags. We couldn't find any anywhere, so my boss asked me if I could track down a room service cart and grab anything I could find, even if it was small. At this point, it's almost one in the morning. The wedding is winding down and the hotel is quiet. I didn't have access to the room service closets or laundry as a banquet server, so I was literally just going floor to floor, hoping that somebody had left their cart out. Finally, on the sixth floor, I saw a cart at the far end of the hall. I could hear a baby crying, and I saw one of our hotel-provided bassinets in the hall next to a closed room door. I had to pass the bassinet to get to the cart. It was empty, as it should have been. As I got closer, the crying became louder. It made absolute sense to me but it gave me this icky feeling in my stomach. I tried not to think anything about it. The baby must be in the room crying and the parents parked the bassinet outside because they decided not to use it, right? I raided the cart for the roll of bags and I noticed that the cart belonged to my friend, Juana. She had an Aerosmith sticker on her cart, so I knew that it was hers. The next day I saw her at work and I mentioned that I had stolen her bags and apologized because she probably had to hunt some down at the very beginning of her shift. I then jokingly thanked her for leaving it next to the bassinet or baby room, and I joked about how unsettling it felt to be in an empty hotel corridor next to an empty bassinet while listening to a crying baby in the wee hours of the morning. 
She was like, that's weird. I cleaned a room on that floor at the very beginning of my shift. I took the bassinet back down to the rollaway storage room, first thing yesterday morning. That family checked out before you even got here. We discussed how unusual it was to have more than one family with a baby request a bassinet so close together, especially on the same floor. We rarely had to dig out a bassinet. At that point, we kind of thought that maybe it was two different families with two different babies who got a bassinet, but it was still strange. As I was leaving and clocking out in the laundry room, Juana stopped me to tell me that the bassinet shouldn't have been there. She double checked the logs. No other families had requested one or even been there. We have a checkout sheet for bassinets and rollaway beds so that if we need one and we can't find one, we know where they were the last time they were used. Sure enough, Juana's room was the last one to have a bassinet. The sheet showed another coworker checking it out for the family when they arrived, and Juana checking it back into the rollaway room over 12 hours before I saw it in the hallway. I guess technically she could have forged her check-in signature, but why would she have done that? There would have been no point. And she clearly recalled returning it to the closet. Regardless of whether or not that bassinet should have been there, the crying baby definitely shouldn't have because there was no child, no family checked into that room or even on that floor. The family had checked out early and had been long gone before I went hunting for a cart. My wife and I seemed to have a simultaneous glitch a couple of years ago at a hotel in Canada. It's not the most significant or interesting glitch, I guess, but we've never experienced such a thing before or since. We were spending the night at a random hotel in Toronto on an overnight layover before flying to Mexico the next day. We are not from Canada and I had never been to Toronto before. My wife had, but as a teenager, and only on a brief trip. When we walked into the lobby to check in, there was a small line of people waiting at the desk. We got in line behind a middle-aged couple who looked like maybe they were there for a wedding or a party. They immediately turned around and smiled at us as if we were all old friends. The wife of the partner said, Hey, so are you girls heading back to Winnipeg in the morning? My wife and I faltered for a moment. She was obviously talking to us and not anybody else, but we had no idea why. We had never met this couple before, let alone engaged in any kind of conversation with them. We had just gotten to the hotel. Plus, neither of us have ever been to Winnipeg. Uh, no. I replied uncomfortably. The woman looked confused and just said, Oh. She was called up by one of the attendants and we got the other, so there was no way to talk any further. My wife and I just kind of looked at each other and laughed, like how weird. We got our room keys and went over to the elevator. It was a large chain hotel and our room was on one of the higher up floors. The elevator stopped before our floor, and when the doors slid open, there were about four to five guys there, late 30s, maybe early 40s, holding beers. They saw us and acted pleasantly surprised. They all did the, hey, kind of surprised cheer, as if they hadn't expected to run into us. My wife and I just figured they were having some fun. But then they started talking to us, as if they knew us too. Ah, oh, we're having a party in Dan's room, one of the guys said. Again, my wife and I were unsure if they were actually speaking to us, but there was no one else in the elevator that they would be talking to, so they were. 
I said, oh, okay. Another guy said, you girls headed up to bed? My wife and I gave each other the side eye. Uh, yep, she said. Yeah, I'm pretty tired too. It's been a long day. The door slid open at what I was guessing was Dan's floor. Well, we'll all be down here in Dan's room if you change your minds. The guys got off the elevator, and when the doors closed, my wife and I started cracking up. What in the world was going on? Why did all these people seem to think they knew us? We made it to our room and got ready for bed. It was chilly, so I slept in my socks, which I almost never do. I fell asleep right away and I slept like a rock as we had already had a long first day of travel to make it to Toronto. When we woke up the next morning, I got out of bed and immediately noticed another weird thing. I was still wearing socks, but they weren't the socks I had worn to bed the night before. In fact, they weren't my socks at all. I was immediately grossed out, but my wife and I had a good laugh about it. I mean, how in the world did that happen? I've never been a sleepwalker, not once in my life. So weird. Since we had a flight to catch, we grabbed our stuff and made our way down to the lobby to check out. It was busy and there was another line at the desk. We stood behind this woman who had two suitcases. She was standing with her body half turned toward us, so she saw us coming. She looked up from her phone when we got in line and then went back to minding her own business as we were. Then after a minute, she looked up directly at us and said, did Bob go to get the car or something? What in the world? Again, we had never laid eyes on this woman before this moment. We had no idea who she was and we certainly didn't know Bob. I have no idea, I said finally. Like the others, she seemed confused by my confusion. It's been a couple of years since this incident at the hotel, but my wife and I still laugh about it from time to time. That hotel was just full of people who were so sure that they knew us, but that's impossible. Our theory is that maybe there was an event at the hotel with guests who looked like us, but I mean, what are the odds of that? And that still wouldn't explain what happened to my socks. To this day, it's still the strangest thing that has ever happened to us. This happened a few years ago, but my husband and I still talk about it. If he hadn't been there, I would have written it off as some kind of dream. My husband and I were walking around on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. We decide to stop for a drink at the hotel and soak in the ocean view. We walk up to the hotel and we didn't notice much until we walked inside. When we walked into the hotel, the entire hotel was empty. Nobody was there. There was nobody behind the counters, not a single soul in the lobby, just empty. But it also had this weird buzz of energy as though people had just been there. There were papers on the counters, cups on the tables. We walked inside through the restaurant outside by the pool no one. We walked back inside through the lobby. We probably spent about five to 10 minutes there and we never saw one person. We left because it was so creepy. Back on the street, everything was normal. People walking by, traffic, everything you would expect. I have no idea what caused no one to be there. It almost felt like the Truman Show where you go off the script and they don't have any actors ready. I would love any thoughts on what you think happened. Also, we were totally sober and we thought perhaps it could have been evacuated, but there would have been people on the streets. I mean, it's a hotel. 
We asked around later and nobody knew anything about anything that had happened that would warrant a hotel, so to this day, we still don't know what happened. In Ivory Coast, West Africa, my friends and I walked into the biggest hotel and palace in the capital at 3 p.m. And it was completely empty and silent. There were no cars, no taxis outside, no customers, no employees. This hotel is an enormous complex with a mall, dozens of shopping stores, pools, tennis courts, restaurants, conference rooms, it's always busy, 24-7. I needed to withdraw money from the ATM, and all the doors were open, so I walked inside. It was the eeriest experience of my entire life. It was like the place had been abandoned. But why the open doors? And everything was okay, it was clean, just all the people were missing. There were no lights on just the emergency lights. But since all the doors were open, the natural light was shining through. So at least it wasn't too dark. The only noise came from my steps on the marble and there wasn't even an echo. My heart was pounding in my chest because the situation just didn't make any sense. At one point, I saw some light on in a store about 50 meters away from me with people inside and I breathed a sigh of relief. But once I arrived in front of the store, I noticed that I couldn't really distinguish the shapes or the faces of the people, even though it was clear glass. They were fuzzy for lack of a better word. Panic started to kick in but I still needed that money, so I hurried to the ATM that was closest. I was afraid the ATM would be dead, but surprisingly, it was functional. I withdrew the money and ran out of the hotel using the first exit I found. Still, no one in sight. After walking a few meters, I exited on another street and suddenly everything got noisy again it was full of people and activity. I came back later to the hotel on another day and it was totally back to normal. It's been almost 20 years since this happened, but I will never forget this experience. I still think about it from time to time and every time I return and I walk past it, it still makes me feel weird. I was around 24 years old at the time of this event. I have always had trouble sleeping, and I would sleep during the day most of the time. This particular day, I woke up way later than usual. And once I did, I was really confused because it was already dark outside. I started wondering what had happened to my mother because she never takes her keys with her. I'm the one who opens the door for her when she gets back from work at the end of the day so I wondered why she wasn't home yet. I was about to grab my phone and call her when I realized some of the lights from our hallway were on. For a second, I thought I was dealing with an intruder or something, but I heard my mom's voice right away. How did she get inside? How come I never heard the door? I got up to make sure it was really her, and it was. When I asked her how she had gotten inside, she got really mad at me, asking if I was crazy and told me that I was the one who had opened the door for her. I asked her how the workday was and went straight back to my room after. I never opened that door. I was sleeping. So who the hell opened it for her? The door was locked from the inside. Yes, I've already considered sleepwalking, but I've never had it, and no one has ever seen me doing it. And I think my mom would have noticed if I was sleepwalking as opposed to just opening the door as usual. To this day, I know that somebody, who apparently looked like me, 
opened that door, but I never did. On May 3rd, 2017, my life was pretty similar to how it is now. I'm a bartender in a smallish beach town in Florida, so I know most people who frequent the bars in our downtown area, either as other service industry workers or patrons. I also have always lived within walking distance to work and the strip of bars and restaurants. That being said, I was 23 at the time and constantly hung out with a pretty large group of friends and coworkers and going out almost daily after work. Although this absolutely made no sense from the beginning, I thought for a while that there might be an explanation to what I experienced. If there is, I never got one. And I'm 100% sure that I do not know the person who this mystery item belonged to, but let me back up. I was going through my trunk before a camping trip one day with a guy I was dating, who lived in the apartments across the street from mine. As we're clearing things out, we find a large black duffel bag stuffed in the very back of the trunk. Upon opening it, I discovered it was full of various soccer gear, cleats, socks, safety pads, and a jersey with a name I didn't recognize on it. I had zero recollection of anyone putting anything in my trunk. I don't have any friends who play soccer, and I never have. The name on the jersey is one that I've literally never heard of, even now and searching on social media didn't yield any results. The guy who I was dating at the time thought that I was lying and thought that it was from another guy I was hanging out with or had hung out with and dated in the past. He didn't believe me that I had no idea how it got there, who the person whose name was on the jersey was, and didn't hang out with anyone who played soccer. That drove me even more insane because I literally didn't even discover the bag in the trunk on my own previously. This was the first time I had ever seen it. I asked every person that I was around regularly as well, as well as pretty much anyone I'd seen in the past month. No one had any clue what I was talking about or recognized the name on the jersey. Please note that there are no spare keys for my car and I never let anyone drive my car. I always keep it obsessively locked and my car has never been broken into. I ended up throwing the bag away a couple of years afterwards I kept it in my trunk forever, hoping that the mystery would solve itself eventually, but no. This will forever drive me nuts. To this day, I have no idea who that person is or how that stuff got into my trunk. I was about 15 years old when this happened. It happened in school, which was in Ireland. In my school, we had compulsory subjects that we had to take, such as math, English, etc. We were able to pick two option subjects. I chose technology, kind of like woodworking, but with circuits as well, and art. My best friend of like 12 years and I got put into the same technology class. Now, to be honest, all we ever did in that class was mess around. We never completed our projects, and instead we would just burn stuff and do stupid things. Anyway, each table was square, and one person was sat at each edge, and beside each person, connected to the desk, was a mechanical vice. It's basically something that you could tighten to hold something in place. My friend and I would literally put anything in there and just squish the crap out of it. One day, we had a piece of copper wire. It was quite thick, I'd like to say a centimeter in width, and it was probably like eight or nine centimeters long. We placed it in the vise and started twisting the knob and tightening it on the wire. When the vise fully closed, we opened it to see what would have happened to the wire. However, when we opened it, it was gone, and I mean like fully vanished. We started to look under the table, in the vice, around other tables, even behind our teacher's desk. After looking everywhere, we thought maybe we dropped it and somebody picked it up. 
We had like eight others in our class, so we just asked them if they had picked up a copper wire. And of course they replied, no, didn't you just squish it? Or no, I didn't see anything. Now, I want to emphasize that my friend and I spent at least an hour looking for this wire, and we tested another wire in the vise to see if that would vanish, but instead it just fell on the floor when the vise was opened. We just laughed it off and said that it's probably some kind of interdimensional thing, but we've really been puzzled about what happened ever since. This occurred about three years ago. I had a position as a buyer, and as such, would receive tons of cold calls and emails from people trying to get our company to try their products for resale. Also important, our company had a digital phone system, like VoIP. There was one central number, and it followed a phone tree to multiple offices via internet connection. Voicemails were available on our big office phones, but the recording would also be sent to our emails. So one day, I received a voicemail from a phone number I recognized as someone who had been attempting to get a hold of me, to sell me their products. Oddly, the voicemail was something like 15 minutes long. Curious, I began to listen to it. The message begins with just static, and the sound of rustling. Seems like a classic butt dial, or maybe they forgot to hang up when the voicemail clicked on. I fast-forwarded the message, just to see if anything was ever heard. And yes. Suddenly a clear voice. They're having a one-sided conversation. I think, ooh, these can be fun sometimes. Except, the one-sided conversation is clearly with me. The person on the phone is referencing my then-recent maternity leave, our company by name, a few other pretty identifying details that currently escape me. They'd stop speaking, and it would be blank air, and then they would answer a pertinent question that I would have asked in that kind of a conversation, clearly speaking to me, but I never spoke to this company or this person. I did receive additional emails from them later that were clearly initial attempts at communication and not a follow-up conversation. I checked with coworkers in case somehow, somewhere, their conversation got picked up in my voicemail, and nope. Co-workers and husband were equally confused, but with zero explanation, we all just had to move on.